Now we're going to the second reading today, which is the most beautiful reading for the season. St. John today, as he continued with his thought in the Gospel and in the, in the, in the reading that we read, it's, it's taken from the same author, he said to us this, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. So who is the Antichrist? The Antichrist is those people who do not believe in Jesus that was divine. And this is the heresy that John is fighting in the year 60 after Christ. And that's why this letter was written. To identify that Jesus was not a superman, he was the Son of God. And that's why he said, who is the believer but that one who believed that Jesus, the Messiah, is the anointed one is the Christos. Remember, in the beginning of Lent, we read, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has consecrated me. He has given me the power to release prisoners from, from enslavement and to, anoint, to announce a year of salvation. So that's very important. Keep in mind the consecration that Jesus was consecrated with because we are going to come to it again. And then he said, is the Christ begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by Him. If you love my Father, you love me. Why? Because I am a, I am a reflection of the Father, my Father. And that's why he said, if we love God, the Father, we have to accept also the one who comes from Him. That's what we say in the creed. God from God, begotten, not not made. And it's very important to understand what John is trying to say to us. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. Oh, there is another point now. If you are a child, you don't disgrace your mother. You don't disgrace your father. You respect them. You do the best you can to really make them understand that you really love them. And by loving them, you obey them. By loving them, you are going to do the best you can not to disgrace them. Today, young people, today, I don't know where they come from. They don't care if their, their, their name, their last name is in the, in the papers. Their parents will die. I mean, disgrace in the family. That's very important. And that's why he said, if you are a children of God, you will obey God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep His commandments. Don't tell me you love God and then you do whatever you want to disgrace Him. And then again he can and continue. And His commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquer the world. Here is the secret. If you really believe and live your baptismal vows, when you say, I reject Satan and I reject evil, and now I believe and accept God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are not anymore agent of evil, but you are agent of God. And if you really are agent of God, you conquer the world. Because what separates me from the love of God is evil, is sin. And that's what he is trying to say to us. But you have to be a child of God to do so. So if you are not in God, you are going to be a son of the other, 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 evil, uh, other, other Satan, uh, a son of Satan. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Our faith is what conquers the world. The faith in Jesus Christ, who comes to be human, who suffered, who died for us. That was going to save us, dear people. It's not the money of the church. It's not the buildings of this church. What's going to save us is faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus, period. And that is something that we are going to refer to the first reading. And then he said, Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? If you really are victor, if you really are going to make it, if you really are going to live in the life to come, there is one thing to believe. And to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 
If you believe, then everything is going to come into its place. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not water alone, but by water and blood. Remember, in the second Sunday of Lent, we brought Jesus to the Jordan, and there, when he was at the Jordan, when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And what was the word of God? This is my son, on whom my favor rests. Listen to him. So Jesus needs to undergo the waters of baptism to sanctify it for you and for me. But that baptism has to be immersed on the wood of the cross by his blood. So he was baptized by blood, uh, 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 by blood too. So now I'm going to, get, to make it clear to you. Look at the picture of the divine mercy. You see the rays coming from his heart are white and red. And that's what comes from the heart of Jesus. When the Langerian, when the centurion um, pierced his heart, from that heart came water and blood. And water identify our call of baptism, and blood identify that we too need to be maintained, need to be to be fed, and that's why the Eucharist come into into part, not only to be born, but also to be supported. So we are born in baptism to the life of grace, and then we are sustained by the body of Christ, the Eucharist on our journey to our eternity. And that is the time when the church was born, dear people, when the centurion pierced his heart. At that very moment, the church was born. And from that heart came blood and water, which signify the waters of baptism and the Eucharist. And Jesus had to undergo the water of the Jordan, but then he has to be immersed in the blood. Remember when Jesus was approached by the mother of James and John and he said, Lord, make my children to sit one on your right and one on your left in your kingdom. And he said to her, you don't know what you are asking, woman. And then he said to them, are you ready to drink the cup I'm about to drink? And they said, yes. And he said, from the cup you will drink. That means you are going to die martyrs. You are going to really suffer for what you believe. My dear people, this is why St. John said, he is born not of water alone, but water and blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is true. Remember, the Spirit of God came upon him at baptism. And that same Spirit that Jesus was filled with is what he gives to the church as a gift. It's better for you I go to the Father, so the Father and I will send you the Holy Spirit. And that is the gift that the church has. With all the up and downs, with all the misunderstanding, with all the divisions in the church, the church remains one because the boat of Peter is not being driven by Carmel, but driven by the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit will never allow this church to go down. I am with you until the end of time. You see? And that's very important to understand because some people think that the church, we are the church, we do things. Yes, you are the church, you are the members of the church. But remember there is somebody who is driving this church and that is Jesus Christ by the gift that he gave us of the paraclete, the Holy Spirit. Now we can understand the first reading. You wonder why the first early Christians were of one mind and heart? You wonder why they share their goods with one another? How can you claim that you are a brother, a sister, and call God your father when you leave somebody who is next to you going hungry? How can you claim that you belong to Christ and to his church when you have possessions and somebody is going to go to bed hungry? And that's what they did. They sell even their property. And they gave the, the, the proceed to the apostles. So every one of them will have the same thing. My dear people, this is what it's called to be a Christian community. 
It's not the Alamayas that we're seeing, which are nice. It's not the community that we, you know, that we are, which is nice. But it is the most important, the teaching of the apostles that kept them together. And because they are together, they felt that they need to help and to reach out to one another.